welcome to Simply Sheppy, your community podcast which aims to create and enhance connections within the community to build a better Sheppy. Hello everyone, today we are joined by Leslie Knoll from Friendly Faces of Kent, an organisation designed to connect and uplift residents of Kent, inclusive of everyone and focusing on those who may need it the most. She has found that her work is especially important in these times and she is here today to tell us more about this. Hello Leslie. Morning Kay. Morning. Can you um, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you do what you do? Um, I do what I do because um, a few years back my marriage of 22 years broke down and I found myself in a situation where I felt isolated and lonely and looked around for something to do, didn't want to join the local gym, didn't want to do any knitting and found that there wasn't really anything out there for um, my particular needs. You either had to be healthy, looking for love or um, enjoying sort of crafts and things. So I just really wanted people to connect with my local community and chat with who perhaps have been in a similar situation or a totally different situation. So, um, So I just popped something up on Facebook, asked anybody if they wanted to meet for a coffee and a biscuit and 50 people turned up at the first meeting so it made me realize that I wasn't alone and that there was a real need out there. That's that's fantastic there's yeah there's clearly generating a need there and and, and generating an interest. Um, So you therefore started up Friendly Faces of Kent. What's Friendly Faces of Kent? What, What are the aims? What does it do? Uh, Friendly Faces of Ken supports anybody 18 or over who are suffering the effects of isolation and loneliness. So it can be for any reason. There's loads of reasons out there. We've got um, uh, people from the age of 18 right up. I think our oldest member is 94. So there's a wide range of um, age groups, different backgrounds and reasons to why they've become isolated and lonely. So we're sort of really trying to reconnect them with their local community and form sort of friendships and bonds to get that support that they might need. Okay, and and, and how do you go about that? What what projects have you got going on or what projects have you done? Well, historically, we would meet um, locally in a group session, but obviously since COVID, we've not been able to do that. We've normally sort of meet locally, go out for walks and day trips have teas and coffee mornings and that sort of thing. But obviously since COVID that's all been shut down. And for the last year almost, we've been running most of our support groups virtually, offering um, an array of different types of um, workshops, which include um, anything from gardening and crafts to mindfulness and assertiveness workshops, um, to online uh, book clubs, um, yes, yeah, so we've got loads going on at the moment virtually, but we also can offer essential shops and pharmacy runs. We do friendly voice calls to our most vulnerable. So once a week, you can get a phone call from one of our support workers to just reconnect you and keep you up to date. And um, we do a community sharing library, which has happened over COVID because um, our members wanted to sort of be involved and help others. So I've been sharing books that we then Uh, pop through pop out sort of once a month to whoever needs them so yeah it's sort of grown and grown and grown over the last year so it's changed direction but it's been fantastic and are you doing all this yourself or do you have um, volunteers to help I've got a really good team of people I have a, a two support workers that work with me and we have two volunteers but we're always looking for more volunteers so if there's anyone out there that wants to lend a hand and get involved would be really great to hear from them. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that at the end and, and, and with some um, contact details. Um, so you're talking about how things had to change over the coronavirus, you had to change how you did things. Um, but I think earlier you mentioned um, in a chat before that something positive might have come out of the coronavirus or something positive might have come out of this situation. Yeah, definitely, because um, yeah, we're hearing so much about all the negatives, but we've got a real great positive because Um, Historically, in our group settings, we've touched upon a group that will never, ever come to those settings, purely because they're housebound through physical or mental health reasons. They're housebound. And obviously, with all what we've got going on virtually, they've been able to tap into that um, and uh, connect with lots of people in their local area, receiving these library books 
projects and being involved in that. And um, it's been great because we've actually, I think we've had about 50 housebound members join that, as I say, would never have joined our group settings. So it's been great to sort of reach that, that audience really and help them through this. That's great. And then what that, that does, of course, is it expands your remit once the, the lockdown is over. Um, and that's my next question, actually, which is, you know, what, what are your plans for the future? Or what are you planning to do? Well, our plans for the future is obviously to get more funding, to be able to continue the virtual workshops and the extra support after COVID um, because of this new group of people that we're um, uh, now in contact with. So it'd be great to be able to continue that. Um, we also want to continue with our sharing library. That's been a great success and we want to continue that again. A, a lot of the people that are housebound are really enjoying those visits to receive their monthly book reads. And um, I'm trying to think what else I sort of thought about. We want to go for our charity status um, because we've grown so big now, we've actually doubled our membership since um, the, the COVID virus. So we now feel that we're in, in a position to be able to go for our charity status um, so that we can access more uh, funding levels and also hopefully be able to expand to other areas of Kent to be able to help some people that are sort of messaging me and emailing me from further afield. So that'd be really great. Okay, so so really big plans for the future then. Yeah. <laughs> um, just a, a quick one before we move on. Um, I'm sure I read somewhere about a pedometer challenge that you were doing. Yeah, we've just uh, completed. We're actually in our last week this week of our pedometer challenge. We've had 25 members join the challenge free of charge. All our memberships free of charge. And they've joined our, mem our pedometer challenge, which is to increase their daily steps by 5% each week. And over a six week period, that'd be 30% increase, really just to get people moving again. I think we've all become a bit sluggish during COVID, you know, still in at home, working from home and sitting on the armchair. So whether you can get out and about now or if you're more vulnerable and still shielding or, or indeed housebound, we're trying to get encourage them to sort of get up, have a wander around even their front room, their garden, and if they can, have a wander and a walk and increase these steps by 30% by the end of the six weeks. And uh, yeah, six weeks ago, we had 25 people join the challenge. And we're in our last week and they're still there. So they're ready to, yeah, to go ahead and receive their goodie bags. And we've already had um, people messaging and asking to join the next one. So we are going to continue it for another six weeks. So that's fantastic news that you're able to secure that funding. And that, that kind of project and all the projects that you do have real tangible benefits for the community, don't they? Um, so obviously with that one, it's 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 um, an increase in, in fitness levels or an, an increased engagement with their bodies. Um, have you seen any other tangible benefits that your members have had from, yeah. from any of your projects? Well, particularly from the pedometer challenge, although it's really based around sort of increasing that steps we've actually been doing a, a room like this once once a week so it's actually got them to communicate and chat with people that they possibly would never ever have met so especially for again for our house band members that's been fantastic and for our um, members that normally come along to our groups it's been an opportunity to, for them to see their friends that they've formed uh, friendships with at the groups and have a general chit chat as well about what's been going on in their lives so it's sort of been a base to reconnect people so it's been great and with the other with some of the other things that we've been doing like the essential shops and pharmacy runs and book deliveries we've found um, that extended family from the members are emailing saying you know thank you for helping us through this time and connecting with our relatives you know because they're not able to do that at the moment so it's all of them given uh, family members another avenue really for them to be able to help and support um, via us so Yes, it's been really good. So you really, really stepped in and, and uh, met a need, haven't you? That that you know was was there before the, the coronavirus, but has been exacerbated by it as well, of course. 
Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, we've we've been we've been up and running for over three years now, and uh, you know the increase has been amazing. And from those fifty people on that first day, we've increased to four hundred and eleven people. I think it is now on Facebook, and we've also got another sixty people who aren't on social media. So the and that's just really in our local area here on the Isle of Sheppey and reaching out towards Sittingbourne and Tenham. So. You know, if we can actually get our charity status and build more, we'd be able to sort of reach more people because the need's there. It's there and it's been there prior to COVID. So I think that, it's, you know, that it's going to become worse as this carries on and continues. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how can how can we get involved? How can people in the Isle of Sheffield get involved then? Um, people on the Isle of Sheppey can get involved because they can join our social media page and become a free member. They can visit us on our YouTube channel, which um, we've loaded all of um, what we've had going on over the last year. So you'll be able to access all of our cookery, our crafts, our virtual walks um, and see highlights of our pedometer challenge and our mindfulness chair based exercise. All of those are free to watch on our YouTube channel. Um, you can also get in contact with me directly if you want to become a volunteer or if you're not on social media and you'd like to have one of our voice calls um yeah so just sort of really get involved whether you just want to be a member or a volunteer or be part of the team we'd be really pleased to have you and of course if you want to become a sponsor or send us some funding money we'll be really really pleased to have you <laughs> I was going to say, well, hopefully we'll share this podcast far and wide. So we'll get you all of those three things, hopefully. Um, yeah, including including sponsors. Nobody can do right. any of this without money, can they? No, that's it. Unfortunately. And, yeah, yeah, and it's a difficult time. Yeah, because we've expanded so much over this time, you know, our funding's pretty low at the moment. So we've gone from really working seven days a month supporting people in uh, support group settings to five days a week. So yeah, it'd be great to um, to get out there and be able to help more people. Okay. And that's, as you said, that's through the Facebook page is the best way to get hold of you? Yeah, through the Facebook page, Friendly Faces of Kent, or um, my email, which is leslie at friendlyfacesofkent.co.uk or um, they can, or phone on 07825 630108. Fabulous. And we'll share those contact details when we share the video. Um, so the next few questions, because Simply Sheppy is also about connecting, and that's how we obviously um, connected each other, wasn't it? Because you saw that we were about connecting, and it was about, oh, look, we, we did a similar thing. Um, so we're about um, Isla Sheppy and trying to help the Isle of Sheppey um, become, build a better life for people. Um, so in your view, um, how can people on the island support each other better? Um, I think that we've got a fantastic community here on the Isle of Sheppey. So I think really just um, bit, continue building that and connecting with people. Notice who you live near. You know, uh, people that are isolated and lonely particularly don't necessarily need to be old. Um, sometimes it's that person that you um, think is the life and soul of the party, but behind closed doors, they're actually really lonely. So, um, yeah, just sort of helping, helping your neighbour go back to the old days where you perhaps knock on the door or pop a letter through asking if there's anything you can do and help with. But also tapping into what we've got going on here on the island. I think people um, are very quick to say we've got nothing going on here, but actually have a look at the social media pages, tap into all these brilliant organisations and their projects. There's something there for everybody. So I think it's just about researching what we've got going on here on the island. And when you hear something you're interested in, maybe like Friendly Faces of Kent, get in contact. Don't pop it in your book and think, oh, I'll do that later. Actually do it that moment. And yeah, and just, just continue being a fabulous community that we've got here. I think it's amazing and very unique. So... That, that is some fantastic um, words about the Isle of Sheppey there. I think we'll all come away from that with, with lots of um, great ideas and inspired. Um, so that's how people can help connect each other. Um, what do you think that the, the Isle of Sheppey can do to build a better place? What can we do to build it um, to be a better place? Be a better place? Um, I think um, just um, 
volunteering and helping. Um, I remember when I was younger, we used to have like litter pickers and things like that. If you see anything going on like that, that perhaps you could get involved with to give a hand or even like on my daily walk, as long as I've got my gloves on and things, I make sure that I pick up any litter that I've got, uh, that I see that I pass. Um, obviously, be careful and be aware of what you're picking up especially at this time. But um, just if you see something that's not quite right, you know, make a stand, do something about it. You know, if we want change here, if you want new things happening here, write, write into organisations and people that make a difference and, you know, be involved in that and try to make any changes. Don't, don't keep quiet. I think that's the answer. Don't keep quiet and moan about the island actually get that get out there and do something about it you know I, I noticed a need for this and have pushed and and the same as UK you know once we see something we go for it and help mm -hmm. and I think that that's it really that it's about helping and sharing and being involved in things that are going on in your community to help others rather than taking a stand back and perhaps having a little whinge about the island in the background so yeah just sort of um if you see something speak up I think that's that's how I feel about things excellent words of wisdom there Leslie uh, and you've heard it here speak up engage get involved in the community all really important things to do to to build a better life on the Irish Epi it's about the I love the fact that when you answered that question you focused on on the people and what we can do rather than um what what the council or others can do is about what we can do isn't it exactly yes, yeah that's what's really yeah. important yeah, I think we're all um, too too soon to sort of judge what's going on, you know, with all the building work, with councillors, what they're doing and not doing, when actually we're the people that live here, we can make a difference. And it's just those small changes that we can do or have an input in, isn't it, that can, can make these bigger changes happen, I think. I completely agree. And that's why you're here and that's why I'm here. And that's why it all works. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Leslie, for your time today. That was a um, really yeah. very interesting podcast and hopefully we are all inspired. Um, and thank you to all of our listeners. Remember, this is your community podcast. So get in touch if you would like to be a guest on our show, have some suggestions or feedback for the future. And if you, we will share Leslie's um, contact details, but if you can't find them for some reason, then get in contact with us and we will forward them to you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.